Greetings, Microscopist. I'm Eric Miller from Instructinate. And do you know the difference between brightness and current in the electron microscope? We're gonna talk about it right now. So have you ever been talking with someone, maybe a salesman, who said something like this? You see, this SEM is better because it has higher brightness, and that means it gets better current. Or something to that effect. Higher brightness means higher current. Is that true? Does a filament with a higher brightness rating actually mean it puts out more current? No, that's not true. And anyone who tells you otherwise either doesn't know what they're talking about or worse, they hope you don't know what they're talking about. In either case, that should send up some red flags. So if brightness is not the same thing as current, then what is it? I'll explain that fully in a minute, but first let's talk about current. So there are two main kinds of current we can refer to in the electron microscope, emission current, and probe current. Emission current describes the amount of electrons actually coming off the filament. Probe current describes the amount of electrons that have actually made it down the column to hit the sample. So while the emission current may tell you that one milliamp of current has come off your filament, you may only get one nanoamp of current at the sample. This means maybe one out of every one million electrons that comes off the filament will actually make it to the sample. And that is fairly typical. The probe current is going to be the more important of the two anyway, since that's the current that's hitting the sample. And that's what we're going to be dealing with on a daily basis. Now, different types of filaments will put out different levels of emission current, and the amount of probe current you get from that filament will depend on the specific instrument you're using. For example, I know a model of Schottky SEM that can only put out about 10 to 20 nanoamps of probe current, and a different model of Schottky instrument that can put out 1,000 nanoamps. That's just my way of saying that these numbers are very broad and general. So we can see that as a type, lanthanum hexaboride, or LAB6, and cerium hexaboride, or CBIX, put out the most current of any filaments, and they cold source field emitters put out the least as a type. With the caveat again that these are general numbers and that there are cold source FEs out there that can beat some Schottky microscopes when it comes to raw current. The main thing to remember here is that in either case, whether it's emission current or probe current, we're only talking about the total number of electrons traveling through these different areas of the microscope. So what is brightness and why is it confused with current? Well, let's take on the confusion first. Let's say we had a light bulb. It's on at a low current and it's putting out a little bit of light. If we pump more electricity through the system by turning the current up, the filament puts out more light and therefore is brighter. Now this is a very simple explanation, but it's something that makes sense to all of us. So it's understandable to think that the same thing is happening inside the electron microscope. More current equals more brightness, or more brightness means more current. But that's only true if we were to use the word brightness in the colloquial or casual sense, which is not what we're doing when we talk about brightness in the electron microscope. In this case, the word brightness is being used in a very specific way to describe a very specific function of the electron beam. The simplest way to put this is that in the electron microscope, the word brightness is being used to describe the current density or the amount of electrons present per unit of area inside the electron beam. So what the heck does that even mean? This is the complicated part. Brightness is a result of this equation here. And in this diagram, we can see where all these different parts of it are coming from. Beam current, convergence angle, spot diameter. Now, as a side note, when these brightness numbers are calculated, the current is always assumed to be the same between the different filament types so that a fair comparison is made. The resulting brightness value is then expressed as amps per centimeter squared per steradian, which is a very complicated way to label something, if you ask me. But as we said earlier, this describes the number of electrons per unit of area, or current density. Here's how we can visualize what's going on here. Let's say we had a bunch of electrons coming down the column, and let's say this first example was from a Schottky emitter. If we freeze it in a moment of time, we can count the number of electrons in this particular spot. This gives us the current density, or how many electrons are taking up a particular amount of space. So here, as a cartoonish example, we have five electrons taking up X amount of space. Now, if we looked at the spot size from a cold source field emitter with this same number of electrons in it, how large would it be? It would be about this big, tiny when compared to the Schottky emitter. 
Even though we have the same number of electrons between these two types of emitters, the spot and convergence angle are much smaller in the cold source filament, which results in our brightness measurement being much higher. In this case, one order of magnitude higher. So even though the Schottky emitter can theoretically put out more electrons than the cold source emitter, the cold source electrons will take up much less space than they will from a Schottky emitter. Another way to put that is that the electrons will arrive at a smaller area. This means higher brightness or higher current density. So what good is brightness and what does it tell us anyway? That's a great question, I'm glad you asked. Brightness can be used as an indication of resolution. How so? Higher brightness values demonstrate that you can get the same amount of current into a smaller space or spot size. For example, let's say you're trying to image something very small and you're running the instrument in a high resolution mode, meaning a very high condenser lens current which gives you a very small spot size and a small aperture. Because of all the ways you're restricting the current as it comes down the column, the result is that you don't have much current to work with when it finally hits your sample. So let's show another example. Let's say with your Schottky system, you're able to get Y picoamps of probe current into a spot size that is X diameter. In this case, Y picoamps of probe current will represent the minimum amount of current you need to form an image on your sample. Now to obtain Y picoamps of probe current using a tungsten system, the spot size will need to be this large. Now, like I said before, while it's likely that you can pump out more current with the tungsten system, the spot size needed to do it is going to be gigantic. The larger the spot size, the less able you are to see or resolve the structures on your sample. And this is the whole point. To get better resolution, you need a smaller spot size. But you also need a usable amount of electrons making it through that spot size to be able to do anything in the microscope. The higher the brightness is, the smaller the spot size you can make while still retaining enough current to form an image. So while brightness and current are separate things, as we've said here multiple times, we might say that brightness is more an indication of resolution than anything. A higher brightness rating shows that we're able to get usable currents into a smaller and smaller area, which allows us to achieve higher resolution in the instrument. I'm sorry if that was a bit complicated, but brightness is just one of those things. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'm Eric Miller from Instruct and A. Check out my social media below and contact me through my website if you're looking for someone to come to your site and train you on how to use your SEM. Thanks.